Hello hockey fans of all ages, shapes and sizes. It is a crisp October, end of October day here. Uh, Halloween uh, is coming and it's cold as a witch's you know what outside. Um, as a proud Canadian, October is the favorite month for uh, myself uh, with hockey season kicking off and trying to project out some of the uh, playoff contenders, etc. I wanted to talk about uh, some of the uh, surprising or not so surprising uh, starts for some of the teams this year so far. And um, I also wanted to talk about uh, uh, NHL tough guys. So um, I'll start off with that actually. Uh, I'm starting to really love the uh, Leafs Nation uh, podcast with uh, uh, Rosie and uh, Nick Alberga and um, they've got uh, uh, Hutts there too, Carter Hutton. I saw him live a couple times when my Sharks were in town uh, playing the Sabres back in the day and he was always a standout. Uh, he'd stand on his head and usually the Sabres would always beat um, the Sharks. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Rosie, um, his hatred for LeBron James is uh, quite endearing. Uh, makes me love him a little bit more, actually. <laughs> um, I wanted to say that, uh, yeah, and, and too, just for the, um, the tough guys, because they're banning fighting in the a lot of the junior leagues. I think the OHL, um, they can still fight, etc. cetera. Uh, so if you want to see a good tilt... Uh, that'll still uh, put butts in seats. Um, and I want to say, like, um, you know, uh, a guy like John Scott might not have the silky mitts of uh, Austin Matthews or, like, Ovi the Great Eight. Um, but for him to score all those goals in the All-Star game that one year and to win the MV MVP of the All-Star game, um, I love a good tough guy. I, I wasn't one myself. Um, I always admire that. There's... Uh, um, some of the uh, the pesty guys too, like um, uh, I'm also loving the Quick Shift podcast. So I'll talk about Avery for a second. I I couldn't stand him as a player. I thought what an idiot. And um, but I he's a lovable guy. Honestly, like it reminds me of like a Marshand. Um, if you if you love the Bruins, he's your guy. If you hate the Bruins, then you hate him. Like a Claude Lemieux or a guy like that, right? So um, the scrappers and the pests. Um, I think they still have a place in the game and um yeah like to see john scott uh you know obviously like uh boogie the boogeyman uh what a tragic story of that guy right so um i don't know i guess uh trying to get the lighting here i can't see my eyes but um yeah the uh basically the tough guys in that um I think uh, a lot of them, they're, they act like the policemen of the game, right? Like Don Cherry was canceled by the woke mob, etc. cetera, um, you know? And uh, I think a lot of these guys, they're, they're soft-hearted people. Um, they care for their teammates, they care for the game. And uh, they just, you know, I think they're good natured and they, you know, they have the stones to go out and, and drop the mitts. Um, you know, and, and I like uh, that Rosie mentioned the other day that um, Revo was kind of jumped a little bit by Jack Eye, I think it was, uh, in the first game. So I'd like to see a rematch there. But, um, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move on to uh, some of the um, surprising, not so surprising starts. And uh, I guess um, San Jose is off to the glorious start that we all <laughs> shout out to the boys in the WhatsApp group. Um, I was saying that uh, I think they're probably going to go 0 and 10 like the Sabers did to get uh, Darlene and and then Power. I think they went like 0 and whatever for um, huge stretches uh, of the season. Now they might grab one against uh, Ovi and the Caps, but I think. Uh, Ovi putting a spark in that scoring touch again. Um, they're looking like uh, the team that they should be. Um, now the Pens are interesting because I thought, like, I don't know, they're like a bubble playoff team. I thought they'd be better with Carl. Um, and they still got, like, legendary, you know, Sid and and Malkin and uh, the new core four with, like, Latang and Carl, right, <laughs> for Dubas. But 
I was actually surprised at some of the names that they've added in the off season. I think they'll be, I think they will make the playoffs. Um, so I'm not really surprised at their kind of mediocre start. Um, I'm very surprised at the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think we, a lot of us wrote them off because of Vasilevsky, but this new guy, JJ, I, I think is uh, Eunice Johnson, or uh, sorry if I got his name wrong, but I just, uh, I had him as a JJ, as the moniker. Um, uh, Tampa looks pretty dang, dang good. And uh, with the questions around the contract for Stammer and some of that um, going into preseason, but um, them and the Bruins, I mean, I, I don't count your chickens yet if you're the Bruins fans because uh, strength of schedule has been uh, in the Bruins' favor. Uh, they've played a lot of, you know, basement dwelling, expe uh, low expectation type teams so far and a couple good ones, but I think November is going to be their month to uh, see where they're going. I, I really expected a dip after Bergeron and Krejci retired, but you know, them in Tampa, right? Winning culture, you know, when you have a winning culture of your, of your team, uh, that, that stuff bleeds through to all the other guys in the room. Uh, somebody's stepping up every night. Um, I want to say like Pavs and the Sharks and, you know, Jumbo and Patty back in the day, they always had that positive attitude, which you need if you want to win. Um, it's never going to go always your way. So, um, the, uh, sizzling sizzling uh red wings holy cow chicken wing sizzling <laughs> uh they're uh they're flying um and i've heard some speculation around patrick kane now like uh, a lot of the fans i'm sure they'd love to see it i i think of a player when they think of their legacy and he's he's got three cups in detroit or sorry three cups in chicago and like would he go play for a western rival um you know if he's a big name such as he is my gut still says he's got to do, even if he never wins a cup in Buffalo, um, I think he would be the greatest addition to their team. I think Detroit's just rocking and rolling. Stevie Y is uh, doing his magic early. Um, I saw an interview with him uh, from the summer and he's just like, ah, you never know the timing, right? And such a like humble, modest guy. Um, you know, maybe, sorry, Stevie, maybe a little bit uh, boring by, uh, you know, the stats and stuff, but he's just a very methodical guy. He's not like flashy, like a, you know, like a Lamorello or, um, you know, I want to say Dubas has that kind of modern flair, um, you know, to uh, make a splash and, and uh, you know, cause the fans to give a stir. It's just, um, Iserman just seems to be slow and steady wins the race. Um, and he was Jumbo's favorite player. I think that's why Jumbo wore 19. But uh, yeah, the strength of schedule for the Sharks is an absolute gauntlet. <laughs> it's absolutely brutal. So um, they're looking like, you know, if they don't take one from the Caps, um, and the Caps are at home, so it probably won't happen. I think they're starting like 0-10, 0-15, um, especially with all the guys going down to injury. Like I was joking on um, Locked On Sharks, uh, JD's um, chat there. I just said, call up the entire AHL team at this point. I'm excited about this uh, Justin Bailey kid. And as I said, as a proud Canadian um, with, uh, you know, Halloween and October and stuff. And um, I just wanted to say that I'm a bit jealous of the uh, incredible development of the U.S. development program of some of these American-born players coming up, uh, Nisey, etc. Obviously, Matthews could, I think, if Matthews keeps his injuries down, um, you might see Ovi eclipse Gretzky, and then Matthews, you know, 10 years later, um, eclipse Ovi. So, uh, wouldn't that be surreal? Um, and I wanted to comment about the brick wall. I guess that's the moniker going around for him. Um, I said JJ. I'm not sure if that one will stick for Tampa. But uh, the brick wall looks really, really impressive. Um, and uh, by the way, yeah, like, is this going to be a situation similar to the Skinner and um, Jackie Soupy Campbell there? Um uh, in um, the Oilers, which is an absolute dumpster fire without uh, McDavid right now. Holy cow, it looks like both teams are stuck in the tar sands. Um, that uh, Winter Classic is going to be an interesting one. Like, I think the guys on Leaf Nation were saying, is it going to be like, 
you know, is it going to be 8-8 uh, eight, eight or 0-0? Zero, zero? Like, both teams are brutal, um, atrocious, if you want to call it that. So, um, I sort of thought, uh, question mark myself of Bukestat leaving, because I thought he was a standout performer in the playoffs for Edmonton last year, and Yamamoto might have been more valuable than uh, what they give him credit for from, like, a two-way guy. So... You never know, right? Um, and I do think the Coyotes, uh, I am a bit surprised. I haven't really checked their strength of schedule or anything um, to see, but I'm a bit surprised that they're, you know, kind of mediocre still. I thought they would make a jump. I'm very surprised at the Senators, which, um, you know, the Pinto thing, it's like maybe they can get past this and start to focus on their, uh, on their team again and start playing because... Um, Obviously, there's some shite going on in that locker room right now that is not any good. Um, so, yeah, like uh, the Sens and the Canadian, I, they're kind of where I thought they would be. They're drafting like gods, and uh, they're going to be amazing. And the Sharks are drafting like gods, too. They're going to be amazing in a few years. But, um, you know, I think I still... It's interesting. Um, I think I did another vlog um, back in the summer um back in Ontario and I was talking about some of the goalies and stuff and like it's often a rookie goalie that kind of comes out of nowhere and in this cap era Wall I think is making 800k a year uh for the next couple of years so like Bennington Binner or whatever he kind of you know I guess all these guys come out of nowhere for the fans but you know their teammates and their their scouts and their their development coaches their you know like the nabbies of the sharks the development um like former players develop now development coaches obviously see something in these guys and they don't come out of nowhere like you know any musician often doesn't come out of nowhere they're you know they're doing they're playing in high school and you know free concerts and events and just grinding it out and working you know like doing the beatles the 10 hours ten thousand hours thing to become successful so nobody really comes out of nowhere but i guess with that I just kind of mean that, um, you know, Wall, it looks like to me that he's he's got the crease uh, for this year and he's going to be the number one and Sammy's going to be the backup. Um, and it looks like a mirror image of, like I said, last year with the Oilers, potentially with Skinner being the rookie. So I'd say Wall's going to be a great uh, Calder candidate and not a lot of goalies ever win, especially like with Bedard in the league too. But you know, not, a, I don't, I don't know if like, I think Sid won the Calder, but like some guys don't win the Calder and they still have insane careers, right? They just uh, couldn't kind of get going in, in their first year. Like I think Jumbo had seven points in his first year and um sorry, Jumbo, I want to tell this story because it's, it's kind of funny in hindsight. Um, I heard of this, uh, this tale. I wasn't there, but um, basically he's in a theater after his first season and like, hey, is that Joe Thornton down there, like, uh, in the theater, and, um, he's like, yeah, yeah, and it's like, you suck, <laughs> sorry, buddy, you're a Hall of Famer, um, one of the best ever, and such a positive guy, but I thought that was a funny story after your first season, you know, fans will be fans, they're always going to be trolls, and, uh, I loved how Leaf Na Leafs Nation was talking about that with Jackie, how, um, Jackie Redman, how, uh, fans are kind of up and down, and, um, and by the way, Thank you for uh, redirecting it back to the Leafs there, Rosie. I um, think that was your job, Nick. Uh, throw a little jab there. I, I love both of you guys. But, uh, yeah, no, um, I can only do with so much Taylor Swift. I'm, uh, I'm happy for her. I think she's a great, a great lady, great woman, whatever. But, uh, yeah, as hockey fans, we want to hear about hockey. So um, don't forget that, I guess, Jackie. <laughs> Anyways, like you even listen to my... Um, stupid podcast anyways I just I love hockey so much and uh played with a pretty famous player and uh I found out how how much I missed um hockey and and stuff and I wanted to talk about it through after the you know the whole coof thing so um I'm always gonna share my opinions and those who like them those who don't eh whatever and uh yeah one more shout out to the uh uh, Weeksy there um, with the Frozen Frenzy. That was awesome. It was such a cool, um, almost like an ESPN red zone kind of thing for the NFL. I thought that was so sweet. Um, and PK bringing Packet the Lunch, as he says, 
for you guys with the chicken parm for you and Bucci. That was, uh, that was pretty sick. Um, so, uh, and then, um, yeah, one more shout out to, uh, the quick shift guys, the, um, Scotty being recognized at a Kings game. Um, seems like a cool dude. Uh, I'd love to meet, <laughs> meet that guy anyways, but, um, shout out to the fan who, uh, said hello. And, uh, I think, yeah, quick shift is, is taken off like a rocket and so is Leafs nation. I love, those are my two, uh, uh go-to staple podcasts right now. And, uh, I do, uh, I guess the third one would be, uh, uh, JD Young on Locked On Sharks. I I love his commentary as well too. He's he's been really great um, and very objective too. So um, I find uh, as a commentator, you can't get too close to some of the players. You have to be real. So um, <laughs> the whole LeBron thing with with Rosie and uh, it's hilarious because uh, I totally agree and uh, makes me love the guy even more because um, you just you have to be a good person and uh, I think everybody gets it wrong at times uh, but you want to be humble you want to be modest you want to be a team player uh, team guy etc and uh, it shouldn't be all about ourselves in life because we never get anywhere without our friends and family so uh, that's it for today uh, we'll probably do an update soon and uh, see how November's going cheers